so congratulations. I'm sure you've heard that a million times today, but a million and one now. Um, First Man is a beautiful, brilliant film about family and with constant subtext of fear and loss, not obviously not general uh, existential fear of, of death, but loss of loved ones or family or friends. Um, can you both talk uh, a bit about the choice to ground a this epic space travel film in this story of, uh, a, it's essentially a character study of a family, really, that's going through this grief during this monumental moment in history? Yeah, I mean, I, I, just to start off, I, I um, uh, thank you first for, for saying that. I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly, I think, what we talked about hoping to, to do with the movie. Um, it seemed a way of talking about the lesser known sides of, of the moon landing chapter of history. We know uh, everything that was gained in a way from the moon landing. What I think we don't really have a sense of is how much was lost in order for it to happen. So I think we wanted to kind of look at it through that prism. Um, and I think that kept getting reinforced every time we'd spent time with the real people, with the family, with people like, like Janet Armstrong or, or um, uh, 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 their sons, Rick and Mark, um, you know, it just sort of, uh, I guess the central thrust of the movie kept kind of revealing itself to us. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's an interesting thing, because I think um, people who haven't seen the film, I think, think it's a kind of Neil Armstrong biopic, which, which it, it isn't. Um, uh, but it is a really interesting uh, to understand uh, the lengths that NASA and these men went to um, but to understand that you have to realize what people sacrificed and um, and the realities of you know sometimes you want them to be superhuman that they're, they're these heroes as opposed to being everyday people but I think it's much more interesting to understand that they're just ordinary really um, they don't have any special powers they're just like us but they did a really extraordinary thing and so did the families as well and Janet is really um She's the moral axis of the story, and she vocalizes things that Neil is afraid to confront in their household mm. or even maybe to himself. He doesn't want to say these things out loud. And when she makes him tell their children and understand that it's his responsibility to tell them this, that's such a powerful statement about the themes of, of fear and loss and grief and the need to face them. Um, how mm. did you approach that scene in the larger context of Janet being this kind of moral axis for the family and for the story itself? Um, I think the, the most extraordinary thing about that was that it actually happened. The boys, Rick, Rick and Mark, told us that, that that is what happened and that, that um, Jan kind of uh, made Neil talk to, to So we knew that it was an actual event. Um, and then when you put it into the context of their relationship, you see how, how explosive that was. Um, I think it's the idea that she knew enough was enough, um, and uh, she sort of, like you say, like she 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 spoke for so many other people in saying that you know this has to stop, and this you know it, it, you are going to the moon, which is you know amazing, um, <laughs> but there is life on this earth that you have to take care of before you can do that. You can't keep running. Um, I don't think she was satisfied by by what he did, but you know I think uh, she did she did the right thing by her children definitely. And hearing the transmission at one point when they cut it off, and mm. she's like she wants to face that and doesn't want to be shielded from that, and mm. she's sort of repeatedly through the film saying, "This is a choice that we've made. We're doing this, and we have to face the consequences, good or bad, together." And yeah. it's it's such a personal thing and a theme for a family, but then it's in the context of the space of space exploration it feeds right back into what Neil Armstrong says earlier in the film about why he thinks mm -hmm. space exploration and going to the moon matters I think, yeah. yeah I think that that scene uh, in particular is that um, I think that Janet anyway from the death of their child was always facing up you know they're not pleasant feelings they're horrific but that you have to go through them in order to get to the other side um, and I think that anyway that period of time especially um, uh, that NASA especially and every organization wanted women to be seen and not heard really um, and uh, and she was more than willing to stand up and say you know that yeah that they're not just astronauts they're 
people as well. There, there was a time, um, we don't really get into this in the movie, but there was a time uh, during the whole first kind of half of the 60s where NASA didn't even allow uh, the wives of astronauts to go to launches just in case something went wrong. They didn't want, you know, they didn't think they could deal with it. And so, uh, mm -hmm. in a way, the cutting off the squawk box on Janet was an extension of this sort of uh, shielding behavior that actually probably only made things worse. Um, so I think uh, we wanted to try to highlight that uh, in some way, uh, but make it specific to Janet's experience. And I think what made it, maybe made it even harder for Janet than for some of the other families was that her, her husband, I'd say unlike her, uh, really wanted to, at least our version of him in this movie, wanted to kind of use the work to escape, you know, escape from the feelings he couldn't quite deal with, the questions he couldn't find answers for. So it's one person trying to kind of slip out under and another person Janet trying to call things out, and the, mm. you know, sort of, that's a tough recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Well, thank you marriage. so much for, for talking to me about it and for making the film. It's a thank wonderful you. examination of fear and grief and confronting that so that we can kind of transcend it together, uh, whether it's families or people, and that resonates with me personally and I know with a lot of other people. So thank, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you so much. much. It's beautiful. Thanks.